We've defined four terms now, given you the symbols for those terms, given you the units and identify them as vector or scalars, right? We got position, we got displacement, we got distance, and we got time. We just wrote a little fake quiz, a little practice quiz on that, and for the most part we did pretty good. Today we're going to extend that, talk about two more terms, speed and velocity, which you got to figure, we spent a few days talking about distance, time, position, displacement. These have got to be related. What these do, speed and velocity, is put those together, right? If they relate time to displacement or time to distance. Let's define another term right now, speed. We're going to define speed pretty loosely as how fast something travels, just how fast something goes. Anybody know the symbol for speed? You did this in physics 20, sorry, in science 10. You know the symbol for speed? Yeah, it's just a V. Yeah, just a V. Just a lowercase v. A capital V in chemistry would be volume. Right? A lowercase v would be speed. Now, the units for speed, well, it could be kilometers per hour. It could be centimeters per second. It could be like millimeters per hour if you're like a snail or something, right? But what do you think the normal units are for speed? The if in doubt, use these units for speed, yeah? Yeah, it's meters per second, right? If we had meters for distance and displacement, and we had seconds for time, then speed's probably going to be meters per second. There are times when we can use the other variables, right, kilometers per hour and whatever, but meters per second always works. Now, with what you see up on the board right now, you might not remember this from Science 10, but there's a little hint for you up on the board right now for the next question. Is speed a vector or a scalar? Okay, you might know this. If you do, great. If you don't, there's a hint for you on the board. Is speed a vector or a scalar? Yeah? Sorry? It's a scalar, yeah. How do you know it's a scalar? Did you just know that, or did you see the hint on the board? Yes, exactly. Good. You knew it, but there's also no arrow on the V. Um, if you see an arrow, it's a scalar. If, sorry, it's a vector. If you don't see an arrow, it's a scalar. So it's kind of a little cheat. We use that all the time in Physics 30. They, ask us, they tend to ask us those questions on diploma exams. The following is an example of a vector, and they give you four options. And it's like, oh, man, we forget. Forget which one's vector or scalar. We just look at our data sheet, and it tells us. Gives us the answer, as long as you recognize that the arrow means vector. Okay, now we're going to define velocity a little bit better than we define speed. Velocity, we're going to define as the rate of change of position. Listen to that again. The rate of change of position. What does rate mean? The rate of change. What does rate mean? Amount? Uh, kinda. Kinda. I'm thinking of a Q word for that. Kind of a synonym for it. it starts with a Q. How quick something happens, right? How quickly something happens, the rate at which something happens. Velocity is the rate of change of position. So it's not how much the position changes by, but rather it's how quickly the position changes. Does that make sense? the rate of change of position. Probably should have used a different color for that, sorry. What do you think the symbol is for velocity? You might remember this in Science 10, but maybe not. If you don't, that's okay. You can figure it out from what's up on the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be V with the arrow over it. Units? Oh, man, this is easy, right? The units, CJ? Meters per second, yeah. Of course, you can sometimes use kilometers per hour and sometimes use millimeters per hour or whatever, but the typical units, the standard units, are meters per second. Vector or scalar? The cheat's up on the board. What is it? It's a vector. Good. It's a vector. So speed and velocity, speed and velocity are almost the same thing, except that velocity involves direction and Speed doesn't. Hey, I got a question for you. See if you can answer this one. 
when do you think average speed would have the same value as average velocity? Okay, velocity has direction, right? Speed doesn't. But when do you think average speed would have the same number as velocity? And when do you think it would have a different number? Sometimes it's the same, sometimes it's different. Yeah? Good, good. If you change direction, speed and velocity would be a different number. If you don't change direction, it's going to be the same number, right? Just like distance and displacement. Distance and displacement were the same number if you didn't change direction. Speed and velocity, same number if you don't change direction. Of course, velocity has to have that direction, but the number is the same unless you change the direction. All right, well, let's write down a couple equations here. Equations, what? Equations? We haven't done equations yet. Well, kind of, we've subtracted. That's kind of equations. Now we're going to divide. This is like, we're like going from like grade one math, subtracting, to like grade, I don't know, four math or something like that. I think you can handle that, though. Speed, V, is going to be equal to distance over time. Velocity, v, is going to be equal to, take a stab at this, displacement over time. Right? Velocity is defined as the rate of change of position. Change in position is defined as displacement. So the rate of displacement, effectively, right? Displacement over time. Anything that's a rate has time on the bottom. So if it's the rate of displacement, it's displacement over time. Good? Well, that doesn't sound too hard. What if we have to rearrange the solve for a different variable? Oh, man. Let me tell you one thing that drives me crazy. And if you had Mr. Crudere for Science 10, I'm sure he already told you about this. Okay, I'm sure that you know what I'm going to talk about right now if you had Mr. Crudere for Science 10, because we think alike in this regard. In many regards, but in this one particularly. I don't know about your other Science 10 teachers, how they feel about it. What do you think I'm going to say to you right now, Nick? Sorry? Oh, 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 oh. clearly... He, doesn't have, he didn't have Mr. Kudair for Science 10 if he says, I love triangles. Okay? You can change one word in there. Eh. No. I hate triangles. And that's probably what you were saying, just being a little sarcastic there. Um, don't use that triangle. Okay? Do not use that little triangle that you learned. In, in, uh, is that how it goes? Yeah? Don't use that triangle that you learned in junior high school. Okay. It does actually work for a three-variable equation like V equals D over T. It does. Like, it's, it's legitimate. It works. But the only thing is, most of the things we do this year aren't three, variable tri aren't three variables. Like, you're going to learn in a few days an equation that looks like this. Don't write this down right now. Try using a triangle for that one, to rearrange that one. Good luck with that. If you've got to be able to rearrange this algebraically, well, then we might as well start rearranging this one algebraically, right? Let's not take the little shortcut triangle thing when we know we're going to have to do algebra. So let's spend the time right now to start doing these things algebraically. Even if it's a little tricky for you, start with the easy equations, and then when we do the harder equations, it's not going to be quite so bad. All right? So let's take one of these, because they're really both pretty much the same, right? Let's take this one, let's say, for average velocity, and rearrange it to solve for delta d. We're going to start with V is equal to delta D over delta T. We want to get delta D by itself. We've got to get rid of the T. How do I do that? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, multiply it on both sides. On the top, right? Yeah. So if I multiply the left side by t, I get v times t. If I multiply the right side by t, I get d over t times t. Oh, man, that looks worse, doesn't it? Well, Martin, how, does that, how do we simplify that to solve for d? Yeah, what's t divided by t? 1. So we're just going to cancel those out. We're just going to say, I'm not even going to write that part down. Right? I'm just going to, in my head, say, oh, I'm dividing by t? Okay, I'm going to multiply both sides by t, but I'm going to sh only show it on the one side. So you want to solve for displacement? We're going to say it's v times t. Or distance would be speed times time, right? Now, usually, to be honest, we usually write it like this. As opposed to v times t is equal to d, we say d is equal to v times t. But it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter which side which is on, as long as d is by itself. Is that okay? It's not really harder than that triangle. Maybe a little bit harder than that triangle, actually. But, like I say, the triangle only works for only a few equations. Oh, now we want to solve for t. So it's a little harder, actually. Want to solve for t? You've got to get it by itself. But first, before you get it by itself, you've got to get it on the top. Okay, I'm not solving for it on the bottom. I want to solve for it on the top. How do you get it to the top? Well, we just did. Right? We just did. We just got it to the top. So I'm going to say v is equal to d over t. That's what I start with. And then I'm going to say, well, v times t is equal to delta d. Well, really, it's d over t times t, right? But the t's cancel on the right side. And then I'm going to say, well, how do I get the t by itself now that it's on the top? What is this, Scott? Yeah, I'm going to divide by v on both sides. So it's going to be v times t divided by v equals delta d over v. But I'm not going to write in, in that step, the v over v, because v over v is just 1, right? So I'm just going to kind of skip writing that step and say t is equal to d over v. So to get the first one, we're going to, we're dividing by t, take it over by multiplying. In the second one, I got to take the t up by multiplying to get it to the top. And then I'm going to take the v down by dividing. Does that make sense? Once you get the hang of this stuff, it's like, it's old hat. It's not hard at all, right? Once you get the hang of this stuff, it's absolutely as easy as that silly triangle that drives us crazy. Good? Okay, there was one little thing that I wanted you to remember here. And I think it was Nick that told me what it was. V and V, velocity and speed, will be the same number. They'll be the same number if, if what? Yep. If what, right? Yeah, if direction doesn't change, yeah. We'll say if direction doesn't change. Now, I, I suppose I could write down one more little thing under remember here as well. That other thing, don't have room, so I'm not going to write it down. You can choose to write it if you want. This is only valid for constant velocity or average velocity. Like if I said a car accelerates or a rock accelerates because of gravity as it falls, we, we can't use this, right? This is valid for constant or average velocity. Maybe I will write that down. Remember this and remember this. It's for constant or average v or v speed or velocity only. Constant or average speed or velocity only. Doesn't involve acceleration.
Let's take a look at example number three from this unit now. This question says, Regina is 600 kilometers west of Winnipeg. Calgary is 1,350 kilometers west of Winnipeg. If it takes a car and its driver eight hours to get from Regina to Calgary, what's the car's average speed and what's the car's average velocity? Listen, we know that speed is distance over time, right? We don't actually know the distance traveled here. We know that velocity is displacement over time. We don't actually know the displacement either. But we can find both of those, can't we? Using what we've learned over the last couple of days. What do we have here? This 600 kilometers. Is that the position of Regina? Or is that the displacement of Regina? Yeah, it's the position, right? Regina hasn't gone anywhere. Like some people might want Regina to go somewhere. But it hasn't gone anywhere, and it's not going anywhere. Okay, that's where Regina is. That's the location of Regina, and this is the location of Calgary, or the, the, the position of Calgary. I'm going to call, I'm going to say position 1. I'm going to make west positive, by the way. Usually I make east positive, but I'm, I'm going to go west positive this time, because everything is west here. I'm going to say D1, or I could say D initial. D initial. The initial position of me as I'm driving from Regina to Calgary is 600 kilometers. It's positive because I made west positive, right? Could I have made east positive? Sure. If I did, what would my initial position be? It would be negative 600, right? My final position here, my final position is 1,350 kilometers west of Winnipeg. And my time is eight hours. That's a delta T, not just a T, right? Because that's not a time like, oh, look at my watch. It's eight o'clock. That's a T. How much time has gone by is delta T, and that's what we've got here. That's what we almost always have, 8.0 hours. Now, should we convert that to meters and seconds? We don't have to here, actually. No, we don't have to. We can, if you want to. You could say 600,000 meters, 1,350,000 meters, 1,350,000 meters. And you could say, I don't know, whatever eight hours is in seconds. Eight hours times 60 times 60 to give you seconds. You could do that, but you don't have to here. Speed is distance over time. Velocity is displacement divided by time. Which one do you want to do first? It doesn't matter, by the way. What's my distance? You know, let's do, let's do the second one first, actually. Let's do displacement. Sometimes, I mentioned this before, sometimes it's easier to find displacement, I find, than distance. Displacement is final minus initial position, right? If we had displacements, we would add them. If we have positions, we subtract them. So we're going to say 1350. 1350 kilometers minus 600 kilometers. That's my displacement over eight hours. And I want to say that worked out to be uh, 93, but let's just check that. Okay, so let's figure this out. Let's say 1350 minus 600. Can you guys all see the numbers on here? In the back corner? Yeah, 1350 minus 600. We're going to divide that by 8. We got 93, 94. I thought it was 93. It's 94. Uh, kilometers per hour. And that's a po that's a positive 94, right? 94 kilometers per hour. What do you think you're going to get right here? Like when you're driving from Regina to Calgary, you're not changing direction, are you? So your average speed should be the the same, right? My distance, my my displacement was 750 kilometers. My distance is 750 kilometers.
What's the positive mean down here for velocity? You got this. What's the positive mean for velocity? West. West. I define west as positive, right? What's the positive mean up there for speed? Miguel, what's the positive mean for speed up at the top here? Nothing, right? So the positive means something here. Positive doesn't mean anything right here. Good? Got it? One more example. Example number four. This one says a hiker walks 300 meters east, then 1,200 meters west. Takes 1,800 seconds. What's the hiker's average speed? What's the hiker's average velocity? Um, this hiker, 300 meters, 1,200 meters west, um, are these positions or are these displacements? Are these the location of the hiker or are these like how far the hiker's gone? Yeah? These are displacements, right? So if we have displacements and we want to find average velocity, let's say, then we're going to have to add or subtract displacements. It's displacement over time, right? But we need the total displacement. Do we add or subtract displacements to get total displacement? We add, right? We subtract positions in the last question. We subtracted positions to get displacement and then divide it by time. Here we're going to add displacements to get displacement and then divide it by time. Now, I'm going to define east as positive here. Go back to my normal way of positive and negative. You could make west positive, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to do that in this question. We're going to say here that displacement 1 is 300 meters. We're going to say that displacement 2 is... 1,200 meters? Is that right? Yeah, we're going to make it negative. Even though I'm doing it with speed here, I'm just writing down my displacements rather than my distances because it saves me from writing down my givens twice, right? If I do it in A, if I'm complete with my givens in A, then I don't have to write them down again in B. My time interval here is 1,800 seconds. My average speed is distance divided by time, and my average velocity is displacement divided by time. Hey, here's a quick question for you. Do you think these two numbers are going to work out to be the same? Displacement's going to have direction, right? D speed isn't. Uh, sorry, um, velocity's going to have direction. Speed isn't. But do you think the numbers are going to be the same? I see some heads going, no, no. Maddie, how come the numbers are not going to be the same? Because we changed direction, right? Now, we don't know what they're going to be, but we know they're going to be different, right? Let's go with speed first here. What's my distance traveled here? 300 meters, 1,200 meters. My distance traveled is, what is it? No, nope. my distance traveled is 1,500 meters, right? Does that make sense? I don't care what direction we are for A. Even though I have the negative written, I don't really care when I'm putting it into my equation here. I'm going to say my distance is 300 plus 1,200 meters, and my time is 1,800 seconds. So it's 1,500 meters divided by 1,800 seconds, and I think that works out to be 83. Is that right? 15 divided by 18, 5 divided by 6 is, uh, is uh, 8.833. Uh, oh, 0.833, yeah, 0.833. And we are meters per second this time. Yeah, no, think about that, actually. Like, stop and think about realist realism, too, right? Like, I said 83.3. I had my decimal place off, right? Is that a realistic answer? Hiker. A hiker's average speed is 83 meters per second. That's like three quarters of a football field. That's faster than Usain Bolt. You know what Usain Bolt's fastest speed is? Like you mentioned him. You know what his fastest peak speed is? This is crazy, actually. This is crazy. His peak speed is just over 50 kilometers per hour when he runs. Just over 50 kilometers per hour. But this is... This is closer to 300 kilometers per hour than 50 kilometers per hour, okay? This is like, this is like Usain Bolt on steroids times 10, right? Um, okay, what about average velocity here? 
Um, what's my displacement? Well, we're going to add positions again. Or sorry, add displacements. 300 plus 1,200. No, it's 300 plus negative 1,200. That's like subtracting, but, but it's not. It's still adding. Divide it by 1,800. That gives us not negative 900 divided by 1,800, which gives us negative 0 0.500 meters per second. What's the negative mean down there? West, good. Now, if you wanted to write it, write down 0.5 west, that would be OK. Or you could just say negative 0 0.500. What's the positive mean up here? I'm going to keep annoying you with this tapping until you tell me. What's this positive mean up here? Nothing. It means nothing, right? Good? Now, how many of you guys, just a quick question. You don't need to worry about this yet, but we're going to get there. Over the next few days, we're going to start doing this. How many of you guys have done significant figures or significant digits? Okay, most. Most of you have. Okay, notice... In this question, we rounded it to two digits, 94. Here it was three digits, 0.833 and 0.500. Okay. If we look at three digits, four digits, and two digits, this is our important one, two digits. Final answer is going to be two digits. If we look at this, we're at three, four, and four. Final answer is going to be three digits. We always round to the least number of digits in the question. Okay, don't panic about that right now. Okay? If you can do it on your worksheet, great. If you, if you forget or you don't know how to do it, don't worry about it. Okay? That's, that's coming. Here's what I want you to do now. Take the next 20 minutes, which is the remainder of class, and work on worksheet number two. Good news, there's only six questions. If if you've got this stuff, you might finish in class. If you don't, it's okay. You can keep working in scheduled help or finish it up for homework.